No, there's an ongoing research project I've been telling you about for a couple of years now that will have a huge impact on the accuracy of West Coast forecasts. It's called PacJet. Northern California's winter weather is difficult to predict because of the lack of data over the Pacific Ocean. There just aren't a lot of meteorological observations in the middle of an ocean. Combine that with poor mathematical handling by computer models, and analyzing future storm behavior is a very tricky thing. Here's a satellite radar composite. There are plenty of clouds along the coast. It's a thick marine layer. It's that cool delta breeze that's pushing it in. We'll keep some strong winds. In fact, today the gusts were as high as 31 miles per hour in Fairfield. You can see where the storms went, though, today. They were generally on the east side of the crest, so Carson City had some reports of hail. But for the most part, Plumas County a lot quieter today. The whole News 10 viewing area with basically fair skies. Hey, Dinger, did you know that if the air is damp, not the baseball, then believe it or not, the ball goes farther? So the river cats are at a disadvantage. Our summer weather is usually very dry. 100 degrees, oh, they're moving, hot. you're moving. It's going to be hot. I'm yeah. the only one who volunteered to help them yeah. so far. And then she found out I have eight pianos. It's because now it's eight. Yeah. I just had no excuse. I couldn't come up with anything, and so now I'm stuck. You know how Jay Leno's got all those cars? I got mm -hmm. tons of pianos. Okay. I'm like Liberace <laughs> without the capes. More than I wanted to know. Okay, I got capes. Who am I fooling? Winds are light to non-existent. N0 kind of means light and variable. Nothing's happening. It's very still, calm. It's pretty warm up in the foothills, too. Look at this. Marysville, 12 degrees warmer than it was yesterday morning at this time. Now, this afternoon is still going to be hot and sunny. Uh, looks like things are going to improve just a bit as we go into next week. That's because the Delta breeze kicks in. It never stays near 100 for more than 9 or 10 days. It just doesn't happen in Northern California. But this low that's developing off the Gulf of Alaska is going to sag a little further to the south. That'll draw in the marine layer. It's not there yet this morning, but it will be by tomorrow. And then the winds will pick up out of the southwest. So yeah, a cooler forecast just ahead, but not yet this afternoon. About a half million people in the Sacramento and San Joaquin Valley are prone to flood risk from a very dangerous situation. Not a hurricane, though. But here we're at Science on a Sphere today. It's First Responders Day. They get in for free. But what we're doing is highlighting in California flooding and what we're doing to make a better forecast, even today, before climate change. We're looking at two years ago. This is satellite data on a spherical globe. This is a patented and trademark system that will show you the world in a way you've never seen before. While models can't tell us specifically what will happen region by region, they do warn of a dramatically different hydrology, especially as relates to snow. Even if the total precipitation remains the same, as each storm passes through, less will fall as snow, more will fall as rain, because it's warmer. And that rain will wash off, increasing erosion, raising peak flows, and with them, the risk of flood. The next one that you see may look impressive, but it's actually going to go to the north. There may be a slight drop in temperatures, but we don't expect rain with that one. However, the tropics may actually bring us our next system. A little further to the south, we can notice two things. First of all, one tropical depression that is weakening. Maybe the clouds impact us, but not much. But this is Hurricane Juliet. It's quite impressive, large and strong. It's moving up to the north, up towards Baja. In fact, tropical storm warnings are out for southwestern Mexico. And it looks like that may translate into Baja moisture. And eventually, if the shift becomes monsoonal, the Sierra could see thunderstorms out of that. And there's the chance for that early next week. Other than that, things look like they're going to stay pretty dry. Looks out at the yeah. State Fair today where they're doing some shucking and jiving. I Thanks, think Lisa. you two have probably had some practice at this. Dale, yeah. maybe a little bit more because he's from South Dakota. Up for grabs, a News 10 t-shirt and a couple of medals, bronze, silver, and gold, of course, for first place. Yeah. The snowpack itself is one-third of our state's water supply. Capturing snowmelt in spring is critical for water supplies through the drier summer months. We have runoff that comes down these rivers earlier in the season than what we were used to. We're going to need to bob and weave and change because there are things that are already happening in terms of our weather and water. In order to give the Sacramento River room to widen, a series of weirs and bypasses was constructed all the way north from Red Bluff to here, the Sacramento Weir. Water is allowed to overflow into bypass canals, relieving stress along populated stretches. But sometimes, even that is not enough. Major to severe solar storm levels for the next 48 hours. The resulting high energy particles that can hit might mean problems for power grids and satellite communication systems. On the attractive side, these are flares are also responsible for the auroras and the high altitudes, the fascinating electrical response of our upper atmosphere. And today's Ask Alyssa column in the Sacramento Bee addressed this very issue. In my weekly column for Tuesdays, I answered someone's questions about solar flares. So if you weren't able to get the bee today, go to news10.net and look for the Ask Alyssa column, and I'll have the answers posted there. But it was kind of timely. Someone asked Absolutely. about solar flares, and there they were.
Look out for flying Almost like I predicted plasma, it. right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not a medically dangerous thing. Okay. It's certainly kind of interesting. It is, it is. What happened when Katrina went across was there was 10 inches of rain. That's a great deal of rain. Certainly would have stressed the levee system and all the pumps that pump out that water back into the lake or down through the river. But what happened was after the storm passed, at least 12 hours later, it seemed like it was fine then. The lake probably rose quite a bit. A lot of the rainfall to the north would have settled in the lake. And there was a levee break here to the north of New Orleans in the north part of the town, south of Lake Pontchartrain. And water has now seeped all the way down to near the Superdome. Also, the French Quarter is in this area here. It's not water from the Mississippi River. It's actually coming in from the levee break to the north. They're going to try aerial sandbag drops to block that, but that's what's filling up New Orleans now.